All right, everyone. I am. Um, I'm going to get us started. Go ahead and move to your mat if you have. Um, if you have rolled out a yoga mat, then um, go have a seat on your yoga mat, but you don't need a yoga mat. You could use a towel. You could just do this right on the floor too, if you prefer. And you don't need any special gear for today. Um, sometimes I teach yoga classes where you'll have blocks or you'll have straps or something like that, but you don't need anything special, just your body. Um, and I also want to invite you as you're kind of getting started and getting comfortable to, um, if you're comfortable with this, take your shoes off. Um, so it's nice to be barefoot. It's healthy to be barefoot. It strengthens your feet, all the little stabilizers and muscles in your feet. Um, and also I invite you to um, maybe think about creating a space that would, um, that would be relaxing and would be restful or would be beautiful for you this morning. And so maybe that um, spraying some essential oils, lighting a candle. I don't do music during my sessions because I, I, it kind of like confuses me with the feedback and I'm like, you know, I don't want it to be staticky. So um, if you have a relaxing playlist that you would like to play either off your laptop or on your phone or something like that, go ahead and uh, maybe get started with that. Um, and with that, as you're kind of getting comfy, um, go ahead and move to your mat, eventually wind up on your back, um, lying down on your back. You can have your arms straight or bent. You can have your legs straight or bent. It's totally up to you. So just start to get nice and comfortable. Situating into it, settling in, setting your things aside, setting your phone aside, setting the trappings of your life. And something I've noticed um, through teaching these classes on Zoom in people's homes is that it is both in some ways it is easier to disconnect because you're alone and because there's less going on in the world right now but in some ways it's harder to disconnect because you are in your own space you're in a place where there's not a whole lot of like accountability. And if, if in the middle of the class, if you wanted to get off your mat and, and uh, clean something up or uh, take care of a, a task or something like that, no one's stopping you from doing that. And so I have learned that the, the need to be disciplined with our mindfulness, the need to be disciplined with our boundaries um, has become uh, in some ways even more important uh, here in our homes. And I imagine some of you uh, have experienced that as well uh, with the fact that there, some of you are working from home. I know you're all doing school from home and it is just amazing the number of uh, distractions that can come up when you are, when you are um, trying to be productive from home. And so um, that all those same things can come up when you're practicing, doing a mindfulness practice like yoga. Um, since some of you might be new to my class. I just, I want to do my due diligence and say, first of all, that yoga is an individual practice. Um, anything that we do today or any suggestion for a pose that I make is just a suggestion. So um, the first agreement that you make with yourself is that you listen to your body, right? And so um, if I don't know what how you're feeling today. I don't know what injuries you have sustained over the course of your life. I don't know what you were up to yesterday that has made your muscles tired. Uh, and so take care of yourself, take care of your joints, take care of your muscles. Um, this body that you are occupying has to last you the rest of your life. And so nobody gets any brownie points for abusing themselves. All right. And so I, um, I invite you to listen to the wisdom of your own body, of your own muscles, um, first and foremost, and I'm just here making suggestions. If this is your first time practicing yoga, welcome. If this is not your first time practicing yoga, welcome back. If you are a regular attendee of my classes, I'm so glad you're here. Um, you might uh, you might notice that today's practice is a little bit more, a little bit slower, perhaps a little bit more foundational um, than my usual classes, and that's because I want this to be accessible to everyone. And so here you are on your back. Let's start by sharing a few breaths together. So start by exhaling all the stale air out of the lungs. Just blow it out. And then inhale, breathe into the belly for three, two, one, and blow it all out. Inhale for four, three, two, one, blow it all out. 
Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Blow it all out. <sighs> Inhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blow it all out. <sighs> we'll go one more. Inhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blow it all out. <sighs> Very nice. So now go ahead and just allow your breath to continue back into a natural pace. And the, the lengthening and cultivating of breath, lengthening the inhale that we were just doing, hopefully created maybe a little bit more elasticity in your lungs, your diaphragm, and maybe started to warm up your breathing system for our moving practice. Yoga is about more than just poses. It is also, um, breath is an essential component to a wise and healthy yoga practice. And so that's why I like to start with a breathing practice. So as you're breathing on your mat here, something that I um, just wanted to share with you today is the importance of small changes, the importance of implementing small habits. Because I think, especially at this point in our time in isolation, oopsies, one second. Sorry. Um, especially during this time in isolation, we are um, we are thinking about, you know, what what can I accomplish? How can I get this goal done? How can I finish this semester strong? And what I want you to start thinking about is think about the long game. How does making a small change today? and then continuing that same small change tomorrow, not even necessarily building on it, but what's a small habit that you can implement today that you do again tomorrow, that you do again the next day, that over time will build up and into, into a, a significant difference from where you otherwise would be. And so I just invite you to, um, rather, than, rather than making it about your big giant to-do list that you, that you may have, um, as you're going into finals week, what's one small thing you can do? What's one small self-care practice that you can prioritize? And it's amazing to me how those small practices, um, something that um, is, is just a little, something that's easy to do. And remember, an important thing to remember here too is that when you do it, you have to celebrate right? You have to do a little dance or you have to say, I'm awesome. You know, something cheesy um, that has an impact on your, on your, uh, uh, your behavior building and desire to do it again uh, the next time. And so um, that's something, just a, a little food for thought for today. Something to think about. What's a small habit that you can implement? Teeny tiny habit. All right. Um, so here on the mat, as you're lying down on your back, I want you to inhale as you reach the arms overhead and point the toes toward the front. And as you exhale, hug both knees to the chest, rounding the spine, picking the head and shoulders off the mat. So we're curling up into a little ball on the exhale. Inhale to extend, reach the arms overhead, point the toes. Exhale, hug the knees to the chest, rounding the spine. Inhale to extend, reach. Exhale, round the spine. Last time, inhale to extend and reach. And on the exhale, round the spine. And this time we're gonna start to roll up and down the length of the spine. And so you do this on your own time. And by the way, if you're on a hard surface that just is not conducive to rolling, then maybe you can skip this part. So we're rolling up to the neck, down to the tailbone. And then after you've done a few of those, go ahead and roll up to a seated position. And so I'm coming into a, a cross-legged position. Um, if cross-legged is uncomfortable for you, you might just have your legs relaxed and out straight. If sitting on the ground at all is uncomfortable for you, you can sit in a chair, you can sit um, on the edge of your couch or something like that. All right, so we're gonna, Continue to incorporate our breath to our movement. So go ahead and inhale, arms overhead. And on the exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Inhale, arms overhead, reach wide, reach tall. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Again, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, pull it to heart center. 
All right, now we're gonna go side to side with our exhale. So inhale, arms overhead. And on the exhale, I want you to plant your right hand alongside your right hip. I'm gonna mirror you. So reach up and over toward the right side. Feel that stretch down the whole left side of the body and maybe even peek your gaze up toward the sky. That has an impact on keeping you aligned in this lateral side plane. Inhale back to center. Exhale up and over to your left, my right. Inhale back to center. Exhale back up and over to the right. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale back to center. And this time on the exhale, I want you to hinge forward over the hips. Walk the hands forward on the mat, stabilizing yourself. And just check in all the way down the length of the spine. So relax the chin toward the earth. Relax the back of the neck. Relax the space between the shoulder blades, the mid-back. Relax the low back. Relax the tailbone into the earth. All right, now go ahead and walk the hands back toward the knees. And then just for the sake of being balanced, let's switch sides. So uncross and then recross the legs. It probably doesn't have a huge impact, but I like to do both sides. Inhale, arms overhead. And this time on the exhale, we're going to twist to your right. Drop the arms in line with the shoulders looking toward the right side. Inhale, bring it back to center. Exhale, twist to your left. Inhale, bring it back to center. Exhale, twist to your right. Inhale. Exhale to the left. Inhale, bring it back to center. And next, we're going to take a little seated back bend. So on the exhale, I want you to pull the elbows alongside the body. And as you do, squeeze the shoulder blades together behind the back. So you're making goal posts with your arms. Some people also call this cactus arm. So it's a little back bend. And as you're doing this, draw the sternum forward and maybe even the gaze goes up toward the sky. Inhale, bring it back to center, reaching arms overhead, bringing the spine back in a line. Exhale, one more cactus back bend. Inhale, bring it back to center. And then on the exhale, bring the hands to the earth in any way that's comfortable for you, bring it into tabletop. So here in tabletop, with your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees, we're going to take it through a few rounds of cat-cow. So as you inhale, lengthen the sternum forward, gaze goes up. And as you exhale, round the spine, tucking the chin to the chest. And so this is forward, backward flexion of the spine. Keep going with your breath. Inhale for the back bend. Exhale to round and contract. Follow your own breath, moving at your own time, at your own pace. Notice the sensations in your body, your joints, your muscles as you move through these poses, as you're starting to build a little bit of heat too. All right, so come back to a neutral spine and we're gonna come back to a little rotation here in tabletop. So I want you to pick up the right hand and inhale, reach the right fingertips up toward the sky. Maybe even your gaze goes up. Exhale, back down to center, back to tabletop. Other side, inhale to the left. Exhale, back down to tabletop. Two more times each side, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more each side, inhale. Follow your breath. Exhale. And inhale. Exhale. Curl the toes under and just for a moment, shift your body weight back onto the balls of the feet, getting a little stretch in the feet here. All right, so glance at your hands, spread the fingers nice and wide, really grip into the earth nice and strong with the elbows. So activate the upper arms, the triceps, take an inhale. And on the exhale, straighten the legs and lift the hips toward the sky, coming into downward facing dog. And for this first downward facing dog, start by pedaling the feet right, left, right, left. Press one heel, then the other into the earth. You might lean really deep into one heel, taking a deep knee bend with the opposite. So just kind of walk this out, noticing how your hamstrings are feeling, your calf muscles. 
And also in downward facing dog, we're putting some weight on our shoulders here. So this is the first time we're getting into this overhead pressing position. And so might feel a little bit uncomfortable here in the beginning as we're building some heat in our shoulders. So really press and lift with the palms toward the earth as you lengthen the tailbone toward the sky. All right, we're going to flow a little bit from downward facing dog to plank. So drop the hips in line with the shoulders coming into the top of a push up. Take an inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's do a couple more. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, now glance up at the hands and I want you to walk your feet forward to the top of the mat, coming into a forward fold, nice and slow. Step your feet about hip distance apart. Take a soft knee bend in the knees. And as you hang the upper body down over the legs, pick up the hands and place them in the crooks of the elbows and just gently sway side to side. We're gonna hang out here for a few breaths. So really pull that breath into the belly. Complete inhales, complete exhales. This is perhaps a great opportunity to lengthen the inhale again, kind of like we did at the beginning of our practice. Can you explore more volume, more elasticity in the lungs? We always hear about the benefits of taking five deep breaths when we're stressed out. And the truth is taking five deep breaths doesn't fix our circumstances, but it does fix or it starts to help our response to our circumstances. And usually it's our response that is stressing us out as much or more than the real circumstances, right? All right, go ahead and release the hands, bring the hands to the shins. And on the inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the crown of the head forward and maybe straighten up the legs here in this slight hamstring stretch. Exhale, forward fold. And on the inhale, stand all the way up, sweep the arms overhead, reach for the sky. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. All right, we're gonna take it through what's called some half sun salutations. So they're here at the top of the mat and we're moving with our breath. Here we go. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the crown of the head forward, flat back, really active in the upper back. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. So we're right back up at the top of the mat with our hands at heart center. We're gonna take it through a couple more half sun salutations. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arm. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Again, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arm. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Nice, all right, we're gonna take it through a full sun salutation. So we're adding what's called a vinyasa flow. So from the top of the mat, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands on the earth, step it back to plank and then lower all the way to the mat with control, all right? So the tops of the feet are on the earth, the hands are beneath the shoulders, and on the inhale, just peel the chest and shoulders off the mat so you're not putting any body weight in your hands just yet. It's a baby cobra, we're active in the upper back, the spine. And on the exhale, take it back to downward facing dog. Two long, slow breaths in downward facing dog, in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. And at the end of that exhale, glance up at the hands and walk or step your feet forward to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms. 
Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. We're gonna take it through another full sun salutation from the top, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the mat, step it back to plank, take it through a flow, lower all the way to the mat. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pause in downward facing dog for those two long, slow breaths in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. And at the end of that exhale, glance up at the hands, walk, step or float your feet, top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Nice. So we're going to add some lunges and some warrior poses to this sun salutation sequence. Here we go. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step it back to plank. Take it through that flow. Lower with control. Building that strength as you lower to the earth. Downward facing dog. Two breaths. All right, so as you're looking back at your feet, shift your body weight to just your left foot and inhale, lift the right leg. On the exhale, step the right foot through next to the right thumb. Now find your balance here between the ball of your back foot and the sole of your front foot. So the back heel stays lifted. As you inhale, bring the arms overhead into crescent lunge. So the front knee is over the front ankle. And then there's a soft bend in that back knee. So now I want you to think about tucking your tailbone under to get that stretch in the left hip flexor. The elbows are straight, the palms are facing each other. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, spin the back heel down, drop the arms in line with the shoulders. So you should feel a little stretch in that right inner thigh here because as you glance down at your leg, you still wanna keep that right knee pointing straight forward in the direction of your toes. As you look down at your feet, you want your front heel in line with the arch of the back foot. So it's like you're standing on a tightrope here, warrior two. Now flip the right palm up, inhale, reach forward. And on the exhale, reverse warrior, gaze goes up, get that nice long side stretch down the right side, keep that knee bend in the front knee. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, circle the hands to the earth, step it back to plank, take it through a flow. And if you're used to practicing yoga, and you prefer to take chaturanga and upward facing dog for your flow, then please feel free. And if you wanna add anything fancy to your vinyasa flow, if you wanna do some push-ups, if you wanna do some handstand kick-ups, I'm not cueing those, but that doesn't mean that I don't want you to do them if that is in your practice and if that would be really fun for you. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, step it through next to the left thumb. Find your balance. Crescent lunge on this side. Arms overhead, elbows are straight. Palms facing each other. Don't forget to breathe. And on the exhale, spin the back heel down, taking it into warrior two. Left fingertips forward. Gaze, as you look down over your feet, make sure your front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot, just like on the other side. Arms are in line with shoulders, and that front knee is over the front ankle. Flip the left palm up, inhale, reach forward. Exhale, reverse warrior, gaze goes up. Feel that stretch in that right inner thigh and left side body. Inhale, back to warrior two. Exhale, circle the hands to the earth, step it back to plank, take it through a flow. And this time, instead of spending all that time in downward facing dog, go ahead and lower the knees to the earth, bring the big toes to touch, and settle the hips back toward the heels. Child's pose. All right, so in child's pose, as you've got your forehead on the mat, your arms are reaching forward, your hips are settling back towards your feet. Remember to breathe. So some traditions call child's pose wisdom pose because it takes wisdom to know when you need a break. It takes listening. It takes awareness. It takes honesty. And those are all 
things that you can cultivate here on the mat in your body. And when you learn to cultivate those things, when you could use a break from stretching or from something that's challenging, then those are the same patterns. Those are the same abilities and cues that you can start to implement when you need a break outside of your yoga practice, right? And so when you need a break from busyness, when you need a break from something that's stressing you out, when you need a break from a pattern of behavior or a person or a relationship or a habit that is not life-giving. But those are all things that we can learn here on the mat. All right, so here from child's pose, press the palms into the earth, curl the toes under, take an inhale. And on the exhale, straighten the legs, lift the hips, take it back to downward facing dog. Okay, so now that we've started to do a little bit of work on our hips here, let's do some leg lifts and twists and downward facing dog. So on the inhale, lift the right leg and bend the knee, stack the right hip on top of the left. All right, and so continue to press into the right hand. So try to keep your body weight evenly distributed between right and left hand, even though you've got one leg lifted toward the sky. All right, go ahead and bring it back to center. We're gonna do the other side. Inhale, lift the left leg, bend the knee, stack the left hip on top of right. So you're finding a twist here in downward facing dog, really ground into the heel of that right foot and still press into both hands equally if you can. Go ahead and bring it back to downward facing dog. Nice. Glance up at the hands, walk your feet forward to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stand, sweep the arms. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Nice. Okay, so look down at your feet. Step your feet together so toes heels are touching if they're not already. And we're gonna start with chair pose. So on the inhale, arms overhead, bend the knees, bend the hips. Settle your hips back as though you're sitting in a chair and then lift the hands toward the sky. The elbows are straight, really active in the upper body. Gaze is forward, remember to breathe. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the earth, step it back to plank, take it through a flow, or you can skip it and we'll all meet in downward facing dog. I think I said this at the beginning of our practice, but it bears repeating. You can always skip anything that I suggest. And so if you wanna skip the flow, skip it. Inhale, lift the right leg, bend the knee, stack the hips. Exhale, step it through next to the right thumb. Find your balance. Inhale, rise to crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Now I want you to straighten the right front leg so both legs are straight and then pivot on the right heel. I'm gonna turn around just so I can see you. So pivot on the right heel. So as you look down at your feet, your arms are in line with your shoulders and look down at your feet, your feet are parallel with each other. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, hinge forward and down over the legs. And you're going to plant your hands on the earth beneath your face. And then customize this stretch for yourself. You might walk your hands back in line with your feet. Sometimes it's fun to reach for the big toes and grab hold of the big toes. Nice wide leg fold here. Breathe into the backs of the legs, the inner thighs. Relax the head, relax the neck. Relax the shoulders. Even though certain parts of the body, the joints, the muscles are working, not every part of the body is working. And so it is always worthwhile to scan the body and notice where perhaps we can relax, even though we're working other parts of the body. All right, go ahead and press back up to standing, and we're just going to come right out of this the way we came into it. So re-pivot on that right leg. I'm turning around again. Re-pivot on the right leg, and then arms are out shoulder level. Rebend the front knee. So we're back here in warrior two. Flip the right palm up. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, reverse warrior. Gaze goes up. 
Inhale back to warrior two. And now keep the legs where they are. Exhale, bring the right elbow to the knee, coming into side angle. Or if it's accessible for you, you might plant the right hand on the earth. Left fingertips are up toward the sky. And breathe. And so the idea here is that we're opening the left ribs toward the sky. So we're finding this twist toward the left side. One more inhale and exhale. Circle the left hand to the earth. Lift the back heel. Inhale, reach the right fingertips toward the sky. Revolve side angle. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, circle the right hand to the earth. Step it back to plank. Take it through a flow. Two long, slow breaths in downward facing dog. In through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. All right, we're gonna take the same sequence on the left side. Inhale, lift the left leg, bend the knee, stack the hips. Exhale, step it through next to the left thumb. Plant your foot. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. All right, so just like on the other side, we got into a wide leg fold here. So straighten up the left leg, pivot on the left foot. And this time before we fold down, I want you to reach behind your back and interlace the hands behind the back. Roll the shoulder blades together and down toward the earth. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, hinge forward and down over the legs. So you're using gravity to pull the hands overhead and toward the earth behind you. All right, now go ahead and bring the hands back to the low back, press back up to standing. And now bring your hands to your hips and you're gonna shorten your stance a little bit. So I want you to have about three or four feet between your feet. And then bend the knees and bring the hands down to the knees. So we're going into horse pose. So your feet are much wider than a squat. And so really sink into the inner thigh stretch here. And then while we're hanging out here, it's also nice to drop one shoulder than the other. So you're taking a little twist here for the upper back. And as you drop one shoulder, maybe you peek up toward the sky, getting a little bit of a twist in the neck too. So this is really organic. So move at your own time, your own pace. As you're nice and low here in this squat, this horse pose, a very wide squat. Breathe into the inner thighs there. All right, and we're gonna press back up out of it and re-lengthen our stance and then pivot on that left, left foot. So the left toes are pointing um, toward the top of the mat. Inhale, arms out shoulder level, warrior two. Flip the left palm up. Exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, back to warrior two. And then we're taking side angle on this side as well. So start by maybe putting your elbow on your knee, right fingertips toward the sky. And so your sternum should be facing toward the right side of the room, right edge of the mat. So you're spinning your right shoulder toward the sky, left shoulder toward the earth. And if it's accessible for you, you might plant the left hand on the earth inside the left big toe. Remember to breathe, take an inhale. And on the exhale, circle the right hand to the earth, lift the back heel, and inhale, revolve side angle. Exhale, left hand to the earth, dip it back to plank, take it through a flow, or you can skip it. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. And since that sequence is complete, go ahead and lower the knees to the earth and settle it back to child's pose for a few breaths. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here, but just a great opportunity to take some of the body weight off the shoulders and really get a nice life-giving stretch for the hips here. All 
All right, press the palms into the earth, curl the toes under, take an inhale. And on the exhale, straighten the legs, lift the hips. Glance up at the hands, walk, step or float your feet to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to stand, sweep the arms. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. All right, we're gonna slow this down a little bit with a balancing pose. I'm gonna to turn towards you just so you can see what I'm doing from right to left. The first one I want you to do, we're gonna do tree pose. And so you've probably done tree pose before if you've been to a yoga class. So shift all of your body weight to your right leg. I'm gonna mirror you and pick up the left knee in line with the hip. And with your hands, do whatever you need to do to maintain balance. If that's having your arms out to the sides, that's awesome. Sometimes people like to have their hands on their hips. And so just check in with your standing leg here. Nice and strong through that right foot. Pick up the toes, spread them nice and wide. Really grip the toes into the earth. Your hips are level. Your shoulders are level. Tall through the crown of the head. And now what I want you to do next is swing that left knee out to the side, out to the left, and then press the sole of your foot against the calf muscle. And you might hang out here for your tree pose. Or if you would like to perhaps deepen the stretch, the, the demand on the hip, you might reach down, grab hold of the foot and press it against the inner thigh above the knee cap. Whoops. Either way, whether it's above the knee or below the knee, keep pulling the knee out to the side. So I want you to imagine that you've got a force field down the front of your body. And if your left knee drifts forward, and it's going to get zapped. So keep using your outer hip to keep drawing the knee out to the side. And then with your arms, like I said, you could have them out to the side for balance. Or if you would like to inhale, bring them overhead, tree pose. Or you could also bring the hands to heart center. So something that helps with a balancing pose is picking a point that's somewhere out on the floor that's not moving, right? So a little piece of carpet or a little intersection of the tile. We'll focus on that. Take an inhale and exhale everything down. So give your standing leg a little shake and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Shift all of your body weight to your left leg, bring the right knee up in line with the hip. And again, just pause here for a moment. Press the toes into the earth, nice and strong through the ankle, level through the hips, level through the shoulders. And then if you're nice and strong in that standing leg, then draw the knee out to the side and press the sole of your foot against the calf muscle. Or you can reach down and pick it up above the knee joint. And we're doing the same thing with our legs as we did on the other side, but you could do something different with your arms. You could, instead of reaching overhead, you could interlace your hands behind your back Take another one of those chest openers like we did in that wide leg fold. Once again, it is so important to find a point that you can look at that is not moving. That helps you maintain your balance. On the next inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale everything down. Nice. And shake out your standing leg. All right, so we're going to slow it down with some floor stretching. So come on back to the top of your mat if you wandered. And inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step it back to plank. Take it through a flow. All right, now lower the knees to the earth, bring the big toes to touch, settle it back to child's pose. Only this time in child's pose, we're gonna take a little side stretch. And so with your arms reaching forward, I want you to walk your hands over to the right edge of the mat and just park your hand, your, maybe your left hand on top of your right. And take a nice long side stretch here, breathing into the whole left side of the body.
and then let's walk our hands over to the left edge of the mat. Park your right hand on top of your left and take some nice deep breaths here in this side stretch. Go ahead and walk your hands back to center and come on up to tabletop and then just pick up your right leg, step it forward outside of the right pinky. So it's going to be pretty wide, maybe even off the mat if you are using a yoga mat. And this might be a good hip opener stretch for you with your hands on the earth, your elbows straight and your back knee on the earth. So you could hang out here or there's a few options you could do. You might try picking up your right hand and using it to press the right knee away from you, getting a little bit more of a stretch in the inner thigh. Another option is to lower your forearms down onto the earth and maybe explore a little bit more depth here in this low, low lunge. So it's totally up to you. Maybe explore it. Maybe you try a combination of all three. Just kind of play with it. We're going to be here for a few breaths, so take your time. All right, now slowly go ahead and back up out of it the way you came into it. Bring it back to tabletop. All right, and we're going to go right into it on the other side. Pick up the left leg, step it forward outside the left pinky. And same thing. You can find any expression of a low lunge that would feel really nice for you today. Sometimes in these longer holds, we notice that there might be differences between our two sides, both in flexibility or in strength or in just our comfort level in a particular pose. And that is not uncommon, but one of the great things about yoga is that because many, most of the poses are asymmetrical, meaning you do it once on the right and then you do the same thing on the left, it gives you the opportunity to perhaps restore balance between your right and left side when it comes to your flexibility or your strength. And so if you are rehabbing an injury or um, if you have a particular habit or shape that is asymmetrical that you frequently put yourself in, yoga can really help to um, correct those. All right, go ahead and slowly back up out of it and bring the legs around in front of you any way that's comfortable for you. And we're going to finish with a similar a hip stretch, but slightly different. Um, go ahead and cross your right ankle over your left knee, coming into a figure four, a reclined figure four, also known as thread the needle. And what you'll do is you'll reach behind your left knee and pull the left knee toward the face. And so you should feel a stretch in that right outer hip. If you don't feel a stretch in the outer hip, then think about drawing that right knee away from your face, even as you pull the left knee toward the body. And so it creates this push pull, which effectively creates a rotation in the hip. And so you can get into that outer hip that's a little bit more difficult to stretch in other shapes and other stretches.
All right, go ahead and release, and then just switch sides, going right into it on the other side. Cross the right ankle or left ankle over the right knee. and slowly release and then just gather up both of your knees and hug them towards your chest pick your head and shoulders off the mat pick the tailbone up off the mat take an inhale and on the exhale release your arms your legs your feet your ankles your wrists your hands release your shoulders and relax into a final resting pose so whatever that looks like for you usually Shavasana, which is the final pose, is done on the back, reclined pose. But if you prefer to be on your side or on your belly, or if you prefer to be seated, there's no wrong way to take on this final resting pose. So long as you do rest, you do find relaxation, you do close your eyes, you do allow the breath to move naturally through your body. We'll be here for a couple moments and then I'll take us out of it. Shavasana. And slowly begin to reawaken the body, wiggle the fingers, the toes, roll out the wrists, the ankles. 
Reach the arms overhead toward the back, point the toes toward the front and take a deep breath and a full body stretch from fingers to toes and everything in between. And then on the exhale, roll over to the right side. And then when you're ready, slowly make your way back up to a comfortable seated position, whatever that looks like for you. Lightly rest your hands on your knees. Close your eyes when you get there. Notice the changes that you've brought about in your body as a result of your practice. Notice the breath. Notice the sensations in your body, your joints, your muscles. And notice also the sensations of the world around you, the things that maybe you didn't notice before, the feel of the air over your skin, the quiet sounds and movements. And finally, notice the state of your mind, perhaps a new sense of clarity, a new sense of awareness, a new feeling of clear-headedness that you brought about as a result of breathing and moving and paying your attention to one thing. That is meditation. On the next inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, pull that breath to heart center. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through your practice. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.